On the other side, we've got Tyler playing what looks like a black-green mid-range or black-green aggro deck. He's got a he's got Garolf's Messenger, but it's not you know he doesn't have a zombie theme deck. It's just Garolf's Messenger because hey, it's like the reverse kitchen thing. So yeah, we've actually it. so the, this the black-green deck here. Um, We've actually, deck that, actually that we've seen uh, a fair amount of play with. Um, we we saw this just a little bit before the Star City Open in Dallas. It's making a top eight. Uh, the idea is that the deck is the rock deck here, is yeah. which Tyler's playing, is uh, very good right now against aggro decks. It has the interaction of Desecration Demon and Disciple of Bolas. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll get those on screen for you when they're actually on the table. We'll talk a little yeah. bit more about those. But you see Frank there on the left, just led with a, a hallowed fountain. Tyler on the play has a sign in blood on turn two. I think what Tyler's deck really gets to do is it gets to both. It gets to be a it gets to be like a right deck, which has a really good matchup against aggro because he has access to four mutilate. I mean his removal his removal suite's amazing. It has one putrefy, four mutilate, three abrupt decay, three tragic slip, two victim of night. Uh, you know, Liliana's. He has so many ways to kill creatures, and he's able to try to go late with Control X because of cards like Sign and Blood and Disciple of Bolas. So uh, he's going to have a little bit of an up, or a little bit of trouble dealing with some of the creatures Frank's going to put on the table. But, uh, you know, given that he's a hexproof deck, but the uh, fencing ace <laughs> sitting right there, that one's not hexproof. And we've got a Giralf's Messenger from Tyler. Passes back to Frank. Right, so uh, I think a turn two fencing ace out of Frank from Frank is uh, fairly good from Tyler's side of the board. That's not one of the yes. scarier cards that he can play because you can kill it with removal spells. And Tyler has no shortage of those in this matchup. See a Rancor on uh, the fencing ace from Frank and swing. Yeah, this is a pretty good opening for Frank because normally... Uh, you wouldn't want to enchant fencing ace in this matchup with a rank. With you wouldn't want to put rancor when when your opponent has untapped mana. Tyler just has so many kill spells. But, yeah, but the he fact was tapped out. With the fact that he was tapped out and that Frank was able to you know really get six damage off that rancor is pretty good here. He's going to force Tyler to right now deal with to deal with the rancor, and then Frank will still be able to get it back. So the one right. kill level only one for one. Him. So Tyler untaps. Plays a fourth land. Uh, looks like we've got a Desecration Demon. So let's put that one on screen for everybody. This is the uh, the latest in a series of 6-6 six, six Black Flyers for four. Uh, Abyssal Persecutor School of, uh, of <laughs> Demon, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so there's the 6-6 six, six Flyer for four. At the beginning of each combat, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. And... Uh, Ooh, it looks like our match switched by accident. Uh, we'll get that right back to you. Anyway, yeah, you can see it causes, uh, at the beginning of each combat, any opponent may sacrifice a creature, and if a player does, tap Desecration Demon and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So the, you can control the demon if you want, but uh, right. you know, that's at, at the cost of a creature, and that's really good against these Hexproof decks that otherwise, you know, the, the Hexproof guys that are otherwise going to... Uh, Trump removal. Well, where Desecration Demon really shines right now is the fact that it's a good answer to Thrag Tusk. On top of that, it's a pretty decent card for um, sacrificing to Disciple of Bolas. So we see a Spectral Flight on the Invisible Stalker that Frank Scarron played last turn, and both of his guys getting in. And Tyler is going to fall. Well, Tyler takes us, he's going to go down to three, which I don't think, unless he has that Mutilate in play, I don't think he can really do. Uh, to me, this, that, that's how, that would be a tell that he does have it. Um, Tyler's Letter's Life Total get very low in this game. by not yeah. be, He's opting to play creatures instead of holding up kill cells. He does have a Thrag Tusk in hand right now, but doesn't really have the opportunity to play it. Uh, I'm a little surprised that he opted not to trade Desecration Demon with Fencing Ace. To me, at least, that he, right. he, he must be, what that mean, means is he has some other way in mind of dealing with this. Yeah, he's staring at that Thrag Tusk, uh, but can't quite see what else he's got in his hand. Well, he has to be worried the reason about making not making that trade because, you know, he can't really... That was the only turn where he could for sure make that trade. Frank has the option next turn to play a creature, tap Demon, and then swing with Fencing Ace. Right. I mean, on top of that, Tyler needs to answer this 3-3 Hexproof Unblockable. So, and in his deck, the only way to do that is Mutilate. So he decides he is not going to play the Thrag Tusk. Yeah. Uh, passes back, no attacks. 
He does have three Abrupt Decay and an Golgari Charm, and then I think he's going to try to do that to one of these auras to survive here. Frank untaps and now is uh, pondering his options. All right, Tyler in a pretty rough spot. He's going to have to answer everything that Frank does. Remember that 6-6, six, six, not a really... Does not actually get to black if Frank doesn't want it to. Right. It's, it's one of those things, like, you can deal with it if you know, you're willing to trade a creature for a combat phase that, you know, or at least uh, to deal with the demon during one combat. Yeah. If Frank, you have to be thinking, wondering whether or not Tyler has double kill spell. So he's just going to go ahead He has and no answer to it. Oh, wow. So Tyler decides to just... Uh, yeah, interesting enough, Tyler... Kind of bluff something there? Well, Tyler had a Thrag Tusk in his hand and chose not to play it. Right. So... It was yeah, it looks like he was attempting a bluff there, but it didn't really, you know. Right. It, it, it's a strange bluff because you have to think that the odds that Frank isn't going to attack with that 1-1 one, one is really low. Right. It's, it's unblockable, untargetable, and it's going to kill you. So, I mean, unless... Well, I have to think, why would Frank, you know, the, the thing is, there's no reason for Frank to leave it back to block. I think right. that, that's the bigger that, that, that too. So, because it's not going to be left back to block, it's going to attack. I mean, well, you, want, you need to make a line. Yeah. Yeah, and Frank was at a pretty healthy life total there as that game ended, so there was no reason for him to leave it back to block either. Strange uh, strange little play there. I would have liked to have seen what else was in Tyler's hand. We, we, we did see the Thrag Tusk that he decided not to play, but, uh, you know, considering the amount of removal... We also had a Victim of Night in hand. Okay, I didn't see that. So that's, uh, you know, he had some removal. Obviously no good against the... Uh, right. Invisible Stalker, but, you know, he had a, an answer to the Fencing Ace. So the way that Tyler, I think, needs to look at the matchup and is that when Tyler, when you're a removal spell deck against Fan Text Proof, you want to be thinking like you're the defender. So you want to think, okay, so there's these cards that Frank can cast, and you either, for every creature, you need to either have a removal spell for it, or you need to have a creature that stops it from attacking. Um, and in this situation, you know, Tyler had kill spells, but he chose to make creatures instead. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like making a turn three Garolf's Messenger... Well, normally is the correct play. If you have Victim of Night in your hand, not positive when your turn opponent goes turn two Fencing Ace. If you have Victim, you may just want to hang hold on to Victim of Night until you can play something a little more powerful. Um, either way, sideboards, we have, um, for the sideboards, Frank Frank's Scarin's deck um, having has a couple more options here. He has three Strangle Root Geists in his deck, which probably come in as a better card than Fencing Ace. Um, just because he needs to have two different, yeah, it can be ju just for, just because I, he needs to have two kill spells to deal with it. I don't think I think Frank really wants to minimize the number of cards that can get one for one by Tyler. Uh, outside of that, he a lot of his cards. You know, he has Ray of Revelation, he has Fog, in his deck lots, lots of cards that really aren't for this matchup. Yeah. So if you're just joining us. You are just in time to catch game two of round three of the StarCityGames.com standard open series live from Philadelphia. I'm Joey Pasco in the booth with Matthias Hunt. And uh, we've already seen, well, we're getting a tour of the standard format. We've seen a couple different decks uh, We've in, in just two rounds of coverage. Here you see Bant Hexproof uh, in the hands of Frank Scarin, who is up a game against Tyler Vogt and the Rock deck. Uh, we also saw Brad Nelson playing a big blitz deck, which uh, he won his round two feature match, and Drew Levin playing blue white red, uh, blue white red flash, blue white red control. So yeah, we're getting quite a quite a mix of decks. Yeah. Thanks to uh, thanks to our coverage lead Glenn Jones picking out some uh, some good ones for us. So we haven't. So otherwise, the sideboard. Looking at Tyler Tyler Vote's options. Um, he needs to. He just needs to have more ways. Make sure that all his cards can interact with Bant Hexproof, which you know is one of those easier said than done mm. things. Is Bant Hexproof is really the kind of deck that is trying to not let you interact. Uh, he does have a couple of cards that he's he's brought in for this purpose, and you know, he has an extra Golgari Charm in his board, um, which is almost certain to come in in the matchup. Outside of that, there aren't too many cards that he really can use. He has a, you know, he has a Gaze, Gaze of, of Granite, granite yeah. which. At five mana does deal with an invisible stalker. It's right. not really ideal, but <laughs> is that, I mean, it's the kind of matchup where I, you probably board in, you know, at four mana, it knocks off all the ethereal armors. Mm. Um, and 
it's funny because you, you know I say when you say these things they sound so bad. Like, right. Like, but you wouldn't want to make better than nothing. It's there's so many cards in your deck that probably don't do anything right. that, that you end up making that play anyway. Uh, the four main deck mutilates should do some work. Uh, we just didn't see any there. Yeah, I mean that's one of the strengths is that I, the the rock deck here, this black green deck, mm -hmm. um, really is good against all forms of creature decks. And I have to actually think that this is a matchup that Tyler's not that scared to see. Uh, he has more cards to interact with fan text proof than a lot of decks in the format. Right, right. So we're gonna see Tyler leads off with a swamp on the play here. Breeding pool from Frank. And a turn one. Addison's Pilgrim from Frank. Tyler has a turn two sign in blood for the second game in a row. Yeah, so Addison's Pilgrim is probably the only creature in Bantax Proof that Frank doesn't normally suit up. Uh, the reason you play it is that a, the Bantax Proof deck is a little bit slower than a lot of the decks in the form, than the lay aggro decks in the format. Addison's Pilgrim really helps make up for that. Also, it's a nice out uh, to some of the answers that people do have for uh, for Hexbreed creatures, right. like Devour Flesh, Sacrifice Effect, and you're just like, okay, I don't care about my Pilgrim. Uh, Voice of Resurgence comes down for Frank Scarron, and Tyler, for his turn three, is going to... Duress dur and Miss. Frank has three lands, another voice, and a Invisible Stalker. So it really seems that Frank has decided to keep his hand on the strength of Double Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. It's pretty powerful against Tyler's uh, removal spell deck. Tyler's going to have to then main phase all his kill spells. So Tyler now with just a swamp untapped, passes back to Frank. Didn't quite see what he drew. Yeah, fortunately for Frank here, for, for Tyler, I believe he does have the Mutilate next turn, which will take care of both Voice of Resurgences. And I can't, I don't, I don't think Frank can not run out the second voice. Three damage really isn't enough. So there he's gonna get in for three, knock Tyler to 14 and play a second voice of resurgence and a hinterland harbor passes back to tyler who draws abrupt decay and, and here we see and pull the trigger on and there's a mutilate, a mutilate. So frank so gets two star stars there will be two twos this turn so yep. tyler does need the second kill spell here uh, yeah there you see mutilate that's a an all-star from way back in torment where it was originally printed but that's an m13 version yeah, Mutilate particularly good in this matchup because Mutilate doesn't target. Right. Um, one of the problems that a lot of these Ragtusk decks have with Bant Hex Group is they have very few ways to interact with it. Um, Black Green not, doesn't have that problem. It gets a full four Mutilates, which are really just board sweepers. So uh, Frank adds an Invisible Stalker to the board, pumping both of his elementals, or at least changing their power and toughness to three three. So swings in for six and ties. And we see need second Mutilate, and yeah. there we go. Mutilate number two, and now he's finally cleared the board. Right. Uh, Frank, as we knew before, we don't know any of the cards left in Frank's hands. Everything that Tyler saw has now won the battlefield. Yeah. And, you know, and pitting all his land drops. Pretty good hexproof card yeah, by so. <laughs> Frank Scarin. Right. And a perfect, <laughs> right off the top, Tyler draws Liliana of the Veil. Yeah, um, she is going to deal with that Geist of St. Draft. And, uh, an interaction you see so often in a lot of different formats. Liliana as the perfect answer to Geist of St. Yeah. Draft. These are uh, cross format all stars here on the table right now. Well, <laughs> Geist was on the table. Yeah, so Frank with a lot of non-targeted removal, or Tyler, a lot of non-targeted removal really has pulled ahead here. So now he's gonna go ahead and plus one to Liliana. Uh, <laughs> discards an abrupt decay. Yeah, and from Frank's side, I'd, you'd be pretty disheartened to see your opponent discard an abrupt decay. Yeah. And you know that, that's like a card that's one of those cards that's actually have. pretty live against you. Yeah. Interesting enough, oh, Tyler, second abrupt decay. what I don't like about that, I'm, I'm curious about that play, is that Tyler immediately played the land and then discarded an abrupt decay. Yeah. I, I think I would have wanted to discard, discard the land and then get, gotten to keep all my spells. But because Liliana's at three again, that's he's going yeah. to get an answer. Second copy of Geist of St. Trap for Frank immediately dealt with by Liliana and a Desecration Demon from Tyler. Well, Liliana's just so good here. You know, that play, when you see Frank make it, yeah. you're saying, oh, well, why would he play a Geist St. Traft into a Liliana? Because that seems so bad. To minus two to Liliana. <laughs> right, the problem is, is that if you, Liliana's kind of puts you in a, you know, bad if you play it, bad if you don't situation. Yeah. Um, because if he keeps it in his hand, it's going to get discarded to right. Liliana. And it's going to plus one Liliana. And it's going to plus one Liliana. So at least yeah. this one gets two loyalty counters. Exactly. But, but, I, you know, Liliana on empty board is when you're a control deck, when you're a removal spell, especially when you're a removal spell deck, is one of those cards that really can shut down the game. So, uh, Desecration, Desecration Demon gets in for six, and then a uh, Disciple of Bolas, we'll put that up on the screen for you guys, uh, comes down from Tyler, and 
when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature. You gain X and draw X, where X is that creature's power. So he gets to gain six, draw six. It was like a little Sphinx's revelation. It left a 2-1 on the board. Sounds yeah. like Snapcaster. I think Disciple of Wolves, <laughs> as a 2 of is one of the more exciting cards in Tyler's deck. And and it is a black Sphinx's revelation is really a good comparison for it. Yeah, and of course, uh, Tyler has a follow-up in the form of another Desecration Demon, and Frank's going to yeah. scoop him up here. Uh, facing down just quite the... Assault over there, planeswalker and demon, and you know, disciple of Bolas gonna just just that one shot of drawing cards is uh, was plenty, but you know, two one does some damage too sometimes. Yeah, so going into game three, you know, um, so we're in round three right now, the standard open. Frank Scarin, interestingly enough, is one of those players who uh, really has made a name for himself in limited. Yeah. You know, he won up until today what was the largest limited grand prix ever. He yeah, is, he was the he was the victor. Uh, at Grand Prix Charlotte, which yeah. is a 2,700 man event. We were both there doing the coverage for that. That was, right. that was an exciting and That was an event. impressive yeah. performance by Frank. I remember especially in the top eight, I believe he went, he made it to his top eight deck, I would say the clear favorite in the top eight, and he ended up uh, kind of steamrolling his way through it. And uh, since then, we saw him and Joe Demestrio, uh, I believe him, Demestrio, and uh, Alex and Alec and uh, making the finals of the team Grand Prix. Or the team, the team sealed, mm -hmm. the team sealed open he, that we right. had in, in Somerset. Somerset yeah. um, so both, you know, both of those, he he did finally break onto the constructed scene just three weeks ago. Uh, he with Shardless Bug, but Standard has been, you know, a tougher nut to crack here. He's for him. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if he can follow up his uh, his legacy performance from a few weeks ago with a Standard performance. Uh, he is 2-0 at this point with Ban Hexproof, and um, but I'd say you know. And, and I, one of the hallmarks of players when you, when you really get into a constructed format, mm -hmm. um, I would say it's easy enough to win your good matchups, but a real test is what you know whether you can navigate your your tough matchups, which I think this is one of them for Frank. Yeah, he's uh, he's facing up a deck that uh, up against a deck that has, like you said, more answers to Bant Hexproof than most decks in the format. The, the Rock is a deck that, as if I'm saying, all right, I'm going to bring Bant Hexproof to this tournament. Mm -hmm. The Rock deck is a problem. But I expect to not run into it. Right, the rock. It well, shows up, but I mean, I don't expect to, to run into it. Like, uh, right. like I'm gonna run into Naya or Junk or Junk, you know, things like that. So what you have said, interestingly, I, I I'm wondering with the last hand, the last method of attack he kind of chose there. He kept a hand which was really trying to double invisible, double a uh, voice of resurgence his opponent. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive that in this matchup that plan is going to work very often, just because of the sheer amount of removal Tyler has. Uh, the Voice of Resurgence will make Tyler work really hard, but I think in the end, the Tyler's deck should be able... Frank, Frank has to know that Tyler's deck will be able to answer both of those. You know, two voices won't take his whole life total. Right. It was, you know, uh, you think of Voice of Resurgence as a two-for-one, but Mutilate kind of does the same thing. And, you know, two voices traded with two Mutilates, but the Mutilate also got, uh, what, was it an Invisible Stalker off the board as well? Right, so, well, he put know. the Invisible Stalker down because he needed to make those Star Stars want, yeah, look threat. Big, right. I think really what will help in this matchup is growing one threat really big. It'll get it out of Mutilate range. You know, if he gets a Geist Saint Traft, and then on the play, at least, you know, Spectrified Ethereal Armor. Right. You know, something like that on it. I think that'll be, you know, that's probably his preferred game plan in this mm -hmm. matchup. And that's where we'll see Gaze of Granite shine. <laughs> Gaze of Granite would be excellent <laughs> against those kind of fans. Just a one of them. We don't know if Tyler brought it in, but it is something. So it looks like we're evaluating our openers. Uh, Tyler appears to have kept. Yeah, well, Frank, Frank's on, Frank's on the play this <laughs> right, thing. So he, He'll I get to make your call first. Well, yeah. Oh, no, Tyler didn't. Tyler's keep. not okay, keeping. Okay, sorry. When he put his hand down, I assumed. But. Well, sometimes what players do, and actually, um, what I'll try to do when I play is not look at my hand until my opponent, if I'm going second, until mm -hmm. my opponent's made a decision. Um, I kind of think of myself as one of those players who, as try as I might, I... I you can probably see in my body language how much I like my hand. Right. Um, you know, that's a, you know th that's a pretty hard skill to work out. Yeah. Like whether or not you you know whether it's one you have to think about. And once I look at those cards, I'm gonna start thinking about whether I want whether like if it's a close one, I'll start going into the tank about it. My opponent mm -hmm. probably know that it's a close one, and I just assume not let them know anything about my hand when they're right. making their decision. So because of that, you know, Tyler Tyler may be in, of that school as well. You know, you keep your hand on the table until your opponent makes a call. Yeah, and I think. Uh, I think that's probably something that that I should be doing as well because it's def <laughs> I definitely will uh, will make faces at bad hands. <laughs> like stop it, shouldn't be doing that. So yeah, but it looks like Tyler's actually going to five here. Um, 
think he, he quickly looked at his six and decided to throw it back. So, well, good news. Uh, uh, yeah, I, that, I that's rough. That, that, the good news is, is that in this matchup, it's not you know the, a mulligan to five is not the, a death sentence. Um, because when you make good plays against banned tax proof, your good plays are often two for ones or three for ones. You know, if you kill that, if if, if Frank makes a creature and puts a bunch of auras on it and you kill it, mm -hmm. you're probably getting a three for one right. out of him. So you're gaining those cards back. You're gaining back, all yeah. those cards back. And you know, you still have to you still have to hope that your five is keepable. You know, right, and that you have it, an answer for that. That you have an answer. You know, there's right. a, you're, you're you're asking a lot of your five card hand, but that's usually true anytime you're mulliganing to five. It's, you're just asking that hand to have a plan. All right, so we're gonna see does Tyler's hand have a plan? Well, let's see. It looks like he kept. So I and see I do, he, one. I believe he does have that gaze of granite you're mentioning there. Okay. He's. I think he actually may have had two or three lands in that hand. So uh, Which opening, is pretty good. Uh, yeah, Abyssin Pilgrim from Frank passes back. Tyler has a. Uh, uh, and a Voice of Resurgence from Frank. Right, so this hand very similar to the one that Frank kept last time, that's Absence Pilgrim into Voice of Resurgence. Right. Uh, no auras. We'll see. Maybe some of the auras come down next turn. And a tragic slip for the Pilgrim. Main phase from Tyler. Yep, he's going to main phase it due to Voice of Resurgence. Yeah, he doesn't want to deal with one creature only to populate another one on the board. Right. And a ranker on the voice of resurgence from Frank Scarin, and it looks like I think a second ranker. A second ranker. So voice is gonna get in for six here. And Frank's gonna hit hit Tyler while you know hit him while he's down a little bit there, especially while kill spell mana isn't up. Right. Again, you know, he doesn't really want to lose those rankers. It's pretty hard for Tyler here because even if he kills the voice of resurgence, he's going to take five more off the hit next turn as Frank will then just be able to double ranker. Right. So uh, Garof's messenger comes down for Tyler. Yeah. Things are a lot rougher now. Yeah. And uh, not able to answer the, the voice. And we're going to see voice swing in for six alongside a Strangle Group Geist right. from Frank Scarin. And it's looking we, rough for right. Tyler. Strangle Geist is a card we pretty much see against coming against any black deck because you saw that Tyler there drew Liliana of the Veil. Mm -hmm. It's so good at answering cards like that. You know, Liliana really doesn't have an effect on the board anymore. Right. Yeah, Liliana uh, will actually improve the, str the Strangle Root Geist uh, it, were he to play it here. So Tyler, uh, trying to think about what he can do. We know he has the, the Liliana. He kept a five-card hand, so it's, like you said, a lot, to, uh, a lot to ask of five cards. He's got a reasonable start, but I think he's really uh, in trouble here. Right, and he's going to go ahead and play that Liliana and... Sacrifice. Uh, I mean, Frank, so, you have to that Frank's, <laughs> Frank's going to pick the Strangle Root Geist. Yeah, so uh, right. uh, Strangle Root Geist. We have a Tragic Slip. I actually think he's counting damage. On, yeah, know, I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's counting it. Counting damage, he makes it. He had to, you know, you want to make sure that Frank chose the right creature. You can't imagine Frank didn't. So two games to one, Frank does manage to defeat Tyler. Vote. vote. Yeah, with some help uh, from from Tyler's apparently opening seven and oh, then opening six. <laughs> right.